beekeeping do's and don'ts and 2020 year in review. I see a lot of beekeepers, even experienced one, open feeding honeybees. Um, not a good idea. If there are other honeybees in the area, they will bring varroa mites and your, your bees will end up getting varroa mites at the feeding location. And you're also going to be feeding yellow jackets. And then I only use Domino cane sugar. I don't use beet sugar. I don't use corn syrup. This is how I feed my colonies with a chick drinker or quail drinker. I go through every day, sometimes twice a day in the morning and the evening. If robbing's an issue, I don't do it in the morning because I don't want them to get robbed out during the day. But then I will guarantee that they get filled up in the evening so during the night they can take that syrup down into the, the cells of the comb and fill them up. And then uh, during the winter, let me show you, I forgot something. What I was saying is during the winter, I take and I make sugar sticks with domino cane sugar. I have a video on it shows how I do that. It's called I'm making syrup and sugar chunks. And I go through with my LED flashlight and I check and I see just how many bees there are and make sure there's the cluster's large enough and then I take the sugar. If they need more sugar and I care carefully slowly push it in the hole. Feeding your bees on on top of the hive with sugar is not a good idea. You want to keep them down below the honey super. You don't want the queen up in here laying and you want them to save the honey for late winter, early spring build up. So you try to keep your queen and the colony down here and you try to feed them sugar. So you don't want to feed them up on top. And you want to make, you want to keep nukes around all winter long. It's like I've got several nucleus sized colonies here in the windows. And this is how I do my mating nukes during the spring, summer, and fall. I'm the only one in the world that does this as far as I know. I have insulated fillers that I developed. R15 polystyrene. It doesn't seem to hurt the bees. And I've got in quarter inch underlayment on one side. And then there's five frames. And when I check, when I check to see if I still have a virgin queen, I take out the insulated fillers. I never take out frames from the deep, or you guys would you guys would call it a nuke. You guys would be using nuke boxes, and the only way you can find out if you have a queen or not is you have to do this. Very very stupid. If you have a virgin queen, she could fly away and up into a into another colony, another hive, and be killed. So I I check the frames as I slide them over. And when I get the one that has the most bees on it, where I think the Virgin Queen is there, I tip it. And I look to see if I can find her. The Virgin Queens are always the fastest bee in the colony. She'll be running around real fast. And that way you can find her. You can, you'll know if she's in there or not. And then when you're done checking, you just put them back. And as the colony expands, you can take out one of these and stick in a couple more frames. And I know about the bee space, but before they start building on that, they're gonna you're gonna give them more frames, so they'll be back to a ton. And then the other thing that makes this better is during April, I've done mating nukes up here in Michigan, and this helps keep the colony warm during the evenings, cold evenings. And then when they get a laying queen, I don't have to take them out and put them in a in a bigger a deep because you guys use a nuke boxes, and I've seen. Uh, Queen castles. I've seen all these fancy gadgets where you have several different mating nukes, or not even nukes, two frame colonies where you have a end up getting a laying queen. And what are you going to do if you have several laying queens side by side? You have to move them. This way, I don't have to move them. They stay right where they were when they started. I just add frames and then I add a deep. You have to check out my videos. The method I use is better than anybody else's. Okay, I want to show you something else. I can't recommend buying queens from anybody. Well, for one reason, if you have a large order of queens coming during the summer, they don't want to put workers in cages with the queens, and they'll pack the box full of loose workers, and then there'll be the screens on here. I've used the screens for these cages over frames. But anyway, what happens is during during the summer when it's in the 
hot and the temperatures in the 90s, even UPS next day air, the bees want to get out and they block the screens and it says air vents do not block. And the queens get hot. Of this order of 26 right here, six of them never made it out of the cage. Then there was only like maybe two queens that actually made colonies. The rest of them died several days after I put them in the colonies. And bee dealer breeders only insure them for 24 hours. And then uh, with Jason Foley, got a, he told me I shouldn't be checking them after I put them in there because he didn't want me to know if they were dying it within 24 hours or later. He, Well, whatever. It just didn't make any sense to me why he, he told me not to check them. But anyway, it's not a good idea to, to buy queens from people. And I, I told Man Lake what had happened, and they confirmed my theory. The queens probably got hot, and it damaged their health, and they died later on. It's because I had mostly all queen cells in my colonies. So I went back to breeding my own queens. And I think that's the best thing to do anyway. Because a lot of the queens you're buying aren't mated very well. A queen can lay really well for the first month or two. And they'll sell that to you. And then after you get that queen and she pitters out and there's a super seizure. And you've wasted your money. And I don't recommend grafting anymore because you can, your, your bees will get inbred. And, see, I have queen cups here. I, I used to do some grafting, but I, I cut back on it. I don't do it anymore because I don't want my bees inbred. And if I, if I make mating nukes early in the year and there's no other commercial bees in my area, I can pretty much guarantee they won't get inbred because I'll try to, every colony I have, I try to get a new queen from. And then in June, when the commercial beekeeper comes in the area, I make more mating nukes, so I'm getting more genetics into my bees. And then here's another thing that I, I tried. It didn't work very well. When I had these queen cups with queen cells on them around day 10 or 11, I would take them out and I'd put them in, in this frame here. It's got holes. It's got holes there. And then I'd put that back in the colony. But what happens is if it's not hot enough, those queens die before they emerge. And it's the same thing with using this, uh, this frame queen cage. If you put this over a queen cell... And it cools off at night. There's a good chance that queen's going to die before she emerges. So you got to be careful when you use this. And I use acetic acid now. I can't recommend formic pro formic acid. I used it two years in a row. And every time it killed 10% of my queens. And uh, not apiary, you just has a cop out. They say it kills fragile queens. It just randomly kills your queens. Just like it kills your workers' strength in your colonies. It just, it's not good for your bees. The second year I used it, it didn't kill any varroa mites. It just killed 10% of, of my queens again. So I, went, I switched to acetic acid, and I'm doing the vaporizing. You have to do it several times. I did it five times during the fall, twice in September, twice in October, once in November, because it doesn't kill the varroa mites on the, in the cat brood. It only kills the varroa mites on the bees. So I wish there was a better method. I know there's acetic acid pads, and there's acetic acid drip. I'm... I'm waiting to see how those turn out. I don't think the bee industry wants a real good method to get rid of, or a cheap method that's good at getting rid of the real mice, because all these products, they're making money off of. Um, you know, what's, see what I do with my uh, small colonies? This is the last thing I want to say. You need to check your colonies during the winter. Like, I'll go outside here in the morning, especially in the morning when it's really cold, and I will check the colony size and see if they're still moving around. I tap, I tap the, the hive, make sure they're still moving. If they're not moving, they got chilled, and I bring them in. And I can also check. I even open this up, and I look down in there, see how big the cluster is, big around it is. And then I can assess by looking here if they go down. And then I take a hive tool, take a hive tool, put it in here. And I pry it open with a flashlight. I look in there and I see how big the cluster is. I can determine the size of the cluster. You guys that are wrapping your hives, you really don't know how big the cluster is. Um, a basketball-sized cluster can handle winter all right. But when they get down to the size of a softball, there's a good chance you get a real cold night. They're going to be chilled. And if you don't know that, they're going to die. And that's going to be a loss for you. Um, 2020 has been a pretty good year for me. I did lose... I did some uh, mating nukes in August, and it had a rainy weekend. I lost 15 mating nukes because I never got a chance to do mating flights. So basically, I, I didn't do as many 
New Queens as I wanted to, and I did about the same as I did in 2019 because a lot of my colonies went south of me to a different apiary to make uh, honey and bees for other new colonies I made th in 2020. So I hope to make 100 or more next year. You We'll see. And right now, the bees seem like they've stopped dying. I got rid of the varroa mites, it looks like. So hopefully they stabilized. I'm looking at having no losses this winter. This is my goal anyway. I have one 2018 queen left. From all the others that I had have died, so I don't really consider that a loss. The colonies didn't die. I used the colonies in other, uh, other combinations. See, that's why I do these here. I do these nukes. If I find a colony that doesn't have a queen and I have another colony that has a queen that's small, I always start with the smallest ones. I can combine them inside this room here during the winter. So need to check out my videos. Just want to let you know. Thank you.